Hello everyone, Brian Begley here from NCloud9, bringing you another Dynamics 365 sales video. In this video, we are gonna discuss creating products and the product catalog hierarchy for using with opportunities and quotes. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Dynamics 365 has a built-in product catalog. And until recently, we have found that most Dynamics 365 clients don't want to build out this product catalog, but recently, we've had more and more clients look to either integrate their product catalog with an ERP system, which might have a pre-built catalog, or they might just want us to create a product catalog for them so that they can create better opportunities and quotes for their potential clients. So today we're going to walk through how you set this up. We're going to get started right here. So I'm in the sales hub. I'm going to switch my sales hub area from the sales area to the app settings area. And before we get too far, you should have a product catalog catalog or somewhat similar security role in order to make the changes that we're looking at today. So I'm in this sales hub app settings and I want to scroll down to the families and products, the price list and the unit groups. Now Dynamics 365 comes with one unit group. It's called the default unit. And what unit groups are related to is how do you sell items? And most of the time, a single default unit is good enough. Now, if you sell your products in multiple ways, for example, cases, pallets, individual units, feet, quarts, gallons, liters, you would possibly need to create different default units for each one of your products. You'd have to create multiple default units or multiple units that you sell your products in. Since we are just selling everything by ones, we are gonna just create a default unit. And so once we've set this up, we're ready to move to the next step, which is creating a price list. Now out of the box, Dynamics 365 comes with a single price list and in our development environment that's called the Contoso Coffee Price List. You can have multiple price lists. So for example, you might have a commercial price list and what that represents is clients that you are selling to commercially as opposed to individuals that you might be selling to. If you sell both B2C and B2B, you might have multiple price lists. I'm gonna just create a new price list here. And now we have two price lists. We're gonna work mostly in the Contoso price list. When I open up a price list, I see some information. First off, I have a start date and an end date. Those are not required, but I do have a currency, so I'm selling all of my products in US dollars. If I was selling my products in different currencies beyond just the US dollar, I would want to create another price list for euros, pounds, etc. We would add products, and we're gonna to get to products in a few seconds, to the price list. And these would be the prices that we are selling our products at based on this price list. So any customer who has the Contoso Coffee price list would purchase the products at this price. So an AirPod is gonna be $16.99, an AirPod Excel is gonna be $4.99. I'm gonna go back a step and look at now how products are created and how we add products to the product price lists. So I'm gonna move up my list here to families and products. And I see I have nine products in my price lists. And we're gonna make a couple changes here. For one thing, because I'm selling a very small group of products, I don't need to worry about a hierarchy. But let's say as I go along and my business is growing, I'm gonna be selling new products and new different types of products. And I might have hundreds and thousands thousands of products to choose from. And I want an easy way to find those products once I'm working in Dynamics, creating a quote or an order for a client. So what we first wanna do is we wanna add a family and families represent different groupings of products. So these are all coffee brewers. I wanna add a family and we're gonna call them brewers. We're gonna give it a product ID. I'm gonna do that one. It doesn't have to be a parent associated with it. I'm gonna click save and close. And now we've created a parent product called brewer. I I have the AirPod. I want to make the revision to add it to the brewer hierarchy path. I'm gonna open up my product. I'm gonna say, what's my parent here? I currently have one parent to add this to. Save and close. Okay, and now I have one product here that is part of the Brewer family. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change all of my other products to also add those into the Brewer family. All right, I have updated all of our products. They're now currently part of the Coffee Brewer hierarchy path. And now I wanna add two more paths or two more hierarchies to our product catalog. So we're gonna say that our company has decided to add two different types of products and they're gonna be called Brewing Accessories. And 
and we're going to click save and close and then we're going to add one more family and it's going to be called coffee blends and so we're going to start selling coffee blends to our clients in addition to selling coffee brewers and espresso makers and uh, now in addition we're going to be selling brewing accessories so we're going to say coffee blends we're going to give it a product ID and we're going to click save and close. Now once we create these, the product families are currently in draft mode. So in order to start using them and applying products to them, we need to activate them, which we do by publishing them. You have to do this one at a time. I'm going to select coffee blends and I'm going to click on the publish button. We're also going to click on brewing accessories and we are going to click on the publish button. So at this point, we have three different product families. We have nine products and we're going to add a couple of more products to each one of the new product families that we've created. So the first thing we do is we're going to add a new product. We're going to make this a coffee filters and we're going to give it a number CF1. We're going to give it a description. We're going to determine our default user group, which in our case is always going to be the default unit. And of that, we're going to use the default unit underneath that is the primary unit. We could say how many decimals are supported. We're going to go with two and now I'm going to click save. And at this point it says a default price list has not been set. So this is a warning notice. At this point we can ignore it. I also want to, before I do anything, I want to assign this to our brewing accessories hierarchy. So we're going to say brewing accessories, select that from the drop down, save it, and now we can publish that. Let's create one more product and that's going to be a coffee blend. So we click add product, coffee. We're going to set the parent once again, coffee blends. We're going to set our default units and our unit group, and I'm going to add a description. All right, we're going to get our warning here. We're going to ignore the warning. We're going to publish that out and we're going to confirm that publish. And now we're going to show you next how to add these products to our price list. So I'm going to click save and close. I'm going to go back to our price list, which is on the left-hand navigation. And I'm going to find our Contoso price list. And what I need to do to add these products to the price list is I open up the price list. I go to the price list items. I have my list of price list items. I'm going to add a new item. So it's pretty simple here. We choose the product. So we're going to say coffee blend Cuban. We are going to set the price pricing information and here you can choose currency amount or you could do markup based on different methods of pricing. We're just going to say each bag is $16 and I'm going to click save and close. We're doing this as simple as possible. We're going to add one more product to our price list which is our coffee filters. We're going to check, go to the pricing information. We're going to say these are $5 box and save and close. And that's all you have to do to add new products to a price list and to create them in Dynamics 365 sales. Now our next step is we're going to go over in our next video is how to take these products that we've created and add them into a opportunity or a quote so that you can create beautiful quotes to send to your clients. That's how we create the product catalog. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And don't forget, visit NCloud9. We have a lot of Dynamics 365 and Power Platform content. This is Brian Begley. I'm going to catch you in our next video.